Mr Shorten, during the federal campaign trail and recent debates, one of the issues that you've been consistently questioned on is that of taxation. Many Australians, including myself, have been getting the sense that you've been avoiding giving Australians a clear and upfront and honest answer. We don't know whether we can really trust Labor on the issue of taxation, but tonight's your opportunity to prove us naysayers wrong. How is the Labor Party going to pay for all of their proposals? And under the shortened government, would there be higher taxation for the average Australian? Bill Shorten, off you go. Well, good evening, Thomas, and thank you for your question. For the last five and a half years, Labor's been working on its policies, and we're able to pay for them. The basis of our policies is that we think that it's time for real change in Australia. We think it's time that a whole lot of people who the system isn't looking after have a better voice. What we're going to do to pay for our promises is that we are going to reform the taxation system. We're going to take away subsidies which principally flow to the top end of town and reallocate them in part to spending on schools and hospitals. We're going to make sure that multinationals pay their fair share of taxation. What we are able to do is pay for our promises by engaging in genuine reform which creates a fairer Australia. It isn't right in this country, Thomas, that a property investor who may be investing in their sixth or seventh property can get a taxpayer-funded subsidy to make a loss on that property. That's simply not fair. It isn't right that large multinationals can have dodgy royalty arrangements, and by that what I mean is that they have a big volume of business and revenue in Australia. And then what they do is, even though they make a big profit in Australia, they pay a royalty to a parent company elsewhere for the use of a logo or some trademark or some intellectual property. And miraculously, this multinational's big profit in Australia gets whittled down to a tiny amount, which is the only part that the Australian tax system taxes. So we seek to reform the system to make sure that we're actually tackling the big issues in this country, being able to afford pension or dental, subsidies for households, battling with the cost of childcare. Can I just interrupt for one moment, because we're going to get to some of those issues, but Thomas Good. actually wants to know how you're going to pay for those promises specifically. So um, you haven't set out the funding details. When are we going to see that? Well, we'll outline the final costings later this week, actually, Thomas. But I can say to you tonight that we're going to reform what's called dividend imputation. So that'll save about $6 billion we currently spend. We are going to reform the allocation of uh, income splitting and trusts. Uh, that'll save several billion dollars. We are going to reform uh, the fact that you can currently claim money off your accountant for claiming tax deductions. We're going to cap what you can claim at $3,000. That'll save over a billion dollars. We are going to reform the negative gearing rules, none of which will be retrospective. If you currently have a property investment, the rules won't change, but in the future, we won't be subsidising investments in existing houses uh, if you're making a loss. So that will save billions of dollars. So we have actually been up front with the Australian people. Let's, we... just, let's just see if Thomas accepts that. Thomas, can you pop back up? Um, you were after a specific answer. Do you feel now that you have the answer that you are seeking? Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with that answer. Okay, fair Thank enough. Um, can I do, I'll, I'll just come to, I'll, I'll, I'll come to part of one of these questions. <laughs> Of course, the last thing he asked was, will there be new taxes? And clearly there will be new taxes on higher taxes for uh, self-funded retirees, on oh, wealthy no. superannuants, no, no, let's... higher taxes on property investment, higher capital gains tax. Well, let's go through each of those propositions and correct them. If we give someone a subsidy for owning shares and then we stop giving them that subsidy, if you take the subsidy away from people, that's not a new tax. We're just not giving you something. Let me be more specific. It's a bit complex. First of all, what I'm about to say does not apply to 96% of Australians. So if you're not sure about dividend imputation, that means you're not getting it generally, so don't worry. But Can I just suggest you don't try and explain all these individuals because there are individual issues because there oh. are questions on them. Sorry, but, you, uh, you asked a, me two specific give a, things. Well, give us a general point because the, the government says those are higher taxes. Well, they would, wouldn't they? You're saying they're not. They would, but they're not. Simple proposition. In Australia at the moment, we give some people an income tax refund 
even though they haven't paid income tax. This is a subsidy, it's a gift. When John Howard introduced it in 2001, it was costing the budget half a, half a billion dollars a year. Now it's costing nearly six billion dollars a year. But where the government is lying to people is they say, if we stop giving you this gift, that somehow that's a tax. We're not taxing the income of retirees. We're not taxing, changing the tax rules. What we're doing is we're just not giving you a gift. Now, there's nothing illegal or immoral about this gift. It's very nice. But at the end of the day, this nation has to make a choice about what it can spend money on. But when the government says that this is a retiree tax, what a pack of liars they are. Because it is not a new tax to take away a subsidy going to someone. The same with negative gearing. Why should first home buyers in this country... OK, I'm, I'm going to say we're going to come to negative gearing, so let's just hold sure. that...